the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And with you. Well, God bless everybody for joining us. This is just an amazing opportunity of grace during this Easter season. Um, it's beautiful to be here with Deacon Jason. We'll be ordained a priest in August. We're excited. Our house superior, Father Ron, um, is postulant Paul, Brother Mark, Brother Ken, and all of you. And we're grateful that you could be with us as God's grace and mercy continues in this Easter season. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, <clears throat> through my most grievous fault. <clears throat> so Mary, ever virgin, <clears throat> the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sister, be <clears throat> to the Lord our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe As we recall year by year the mysteries by which, through the restoration of its original dignity, human nature has received the hope of rising again, we earnestly beseech your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate in faith we may possess an unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The high priest rose up and all his companions, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and, filled with jealousy, laid hands upon the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out, and said, Go and take your place in the temple area and tell the people everything about this life. When they heard this, they went to the temple early in the morning and taught. When the high priest and his companions arrived, they convened the Sanhedrin, the full senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the jail to have them brought in. But the court officers who went did not find them in the prison, so they came back and reported, We found the jail securely locked and the guards stationed outside the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. When the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests heard this report, they were at a loss about them as to what this would come to. Then someone came in and reported to them, the men whom you put in the prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went and brought them, but without force, because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. 
Let the soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord, Lord hears, hears the cry of the poor. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord, Lord hears, hears the, the cry of the poor. poor. Look to him, that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives in truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my brothers and sisters, both here at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy, all of you that are tuning in from the live stream, it is really good to be with you today. It's good to be with my brother, Father Chris. This is, I think, our third Mass that we've been able to celebrate together over this whole Divine Mercy celebration that we've been having and he invited me to preach this morning, so I'm deeply honored, Father Chris, thank you. Um, it's good to be with you at the altar, as always, and Father Ron as well. So thank you, both of you brothers, and Brother Mark and Brother Ken as well. We have been on a divine mercy wave, a high wave, one of those like 33-foot waves for the past, what, four or five days. And sure, it's crested and it's broken, but we are still getting a lot of tail out of that wave and riding the wave of the divine mercy. And it's a beautiful thing. And when we look at the gospel today, 
This is a conclusion of the conversation that Jesus is having with the Pharisee Nicodemus, whose spirit and soul was awakened, right? We've heard for the past three days, the church in her holy wisdom, after the eighth day of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, directs our attention to John 3, verses 1 through 18. Now remember, the church is the church triumphant in heaven, so we know that the church, we're connected with the church in heaven, and we're receiving constant inspiration and connection from the Holy Spirit with the church in heaven. And the church directs our liturgical actions in our prayer as well, so that we who are here on earth, the pilgrim church, along with the purgative church, the church in purgatory, we're united together in this body, the body of Christ. And he is the head leading us, guiding us and directing us. So for three days, the church breaks down this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus for us. And it's really powerful. I mean, there's so much going on and there's always multiple layers in the Gospel of John. It's the Gospel that when I was at Franciscan University, I had Dr. Scott Hahn for a couple classes and, and he would say that the Gospel of John, and this is not from him, but he brought it to our attention, the Gospel of John is the Gospel in which babes can wade, but will also drown elephants. It's that profound. It's my favorite gospel. There's always multiple layers. There's the, the surface level. There's the immediate literal meaning that's going on. And then there's usually layer after layer after layer that's going on as well. And we know that the Holy Spirit is the principal author of Scripture and was inspiring St. John, the beloved disciple, who knew the heart of Jesus better than any of the other disciples, right? So the revelation would show us in the Gospel of John, and in all the three other letters of John, John uses the word in Greek to believe, pisteo, or pistos, 91 times. That's more times than all of the other New Testament books combined. He uses the word to believe. And these passages from verses 12 to 18, John uses the word six times in six verses. I would contend very strongly that the Holy Spirit, in inspiring this gospel passage to follow the eighth day of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, which is the day pointing to, if you check this out, some of Father Chris's talks, he refers to this, unpacks it, as did Father Seraphim, if you can find some of his talks. The eighth day is the day of eternity that points to our eternal destiny, the day that will never end when we live and dwell in the glory of the Father forever in Jesus Christ around the throne of the Lamb, standing as though he had been slain. So we go right to this gospel, and I would contend very strongly that the message and devotion of divine mercy is strongly present in chapter 3 of John's gospel. Not only here, but very strongly in chapter 3. Why? John talks about being born of what? Water and spirit, the two together. When Faustina asked Jesus through the prompting of blessed Michael Sapochko, her spiritual director, what the rays mean coming forth from the heart of Jesus, Jesus says that the white ray or the pale ray stands for our baptism and the cleansing from sin. So being born from above, the Greek in this passage is anothen, being born from above, or it could also be translated as a new. They're one and the same in our baptism. We're born from above, and we're given divine life. Second Peter 1, 4. We, we are partakers in the divine nature. We receive the divine nature of Jesus Christ himself. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall ever shall believe in him will have eternal life, may have eternal life. I love this gospel. I love the gospel of John. If you can't tell, it gets me a little worked up. So we see also the other ray, which stands for the forgiveness of sins and holy confession and also 
the gift of life and Holy Eucharist, which the theme of believe will come up very strong in the Eucharistic discourse that Jesus is having. And many, many believed, many followed him to a certain degree. But when he said, this is my flesh, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Many of this found this a hard saying, and they could not take it. They could not believe. They could not take this to heart fully. And what happened? They laughed. Their hearts were burning for a while, but then it was, oh, this is too much. He's talking about eating his flesh. But this is a different kind of flesh. This is resurrected flesh. This is a glorified flesh that Jesus was pointing to. So this word to believe. So we see in the, the image of divine mercy, Jesus bears the marks in his hands and from the center of his heart or his side because the lance went through his body into the inner cavity of his heart, which is the holy of holies, and blood and water gushed forth from his heart to go out to all the world. The floodgates of divine mercy were opened for you and me, brothers and sisters, to find life and access to the inner holy of holies as the temple veil was torn in two. We gained access to the holy of holies, which is the very heart of Jesus Christ himself. Both the son of God and the son of man. And we can drink copiously from this divine life. What do we see at the bottom? What is the signature of Jesus that he gives to St. Faustina in the image of the divine mercy? Group participation, everyone, all at one time. Jesus, I trust in you. One more time. Jesus, I trust in you. Holy Trinity. Jesus, I trust in you. If we, are to, if we were to substitute, I mentioned that in the Gospel of John and in his writings, 91 times he uses the verbal form of to believe. But you and I, and in Western culture since the Enlightenment period, when we hear to believe, it's what? It's much more of an intellectual consent. I believe in a proposition. Is the sky blue? Yes, I believe. Is... Uh, is the grass green? Yes, I believe. Is a circle round? Yes, I believe. I believe that. Yes, I give my intellectual consent. But that's not what is taking place in the gospel, and that's not what Jesus' Jesus's signature is. If we were to take, I will propose to you, and there, I, I have support with this, Father Felix, who's a biblical scholar, is, and he's the one through whom I first discovered this whole entire notion of to believe. If we in our own mindset and the, the, how we live today were to take and substitute where it says to believe in the Gospel of John and other places and, and replace the word with trust, we would gain a whole new perspective on what's going on in the Gospel. Listen to this. Just entertain me for a minute. John 3, 12, if I have told you of earthly things and you do, not you do not trust, how can you trust if I tell you of heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the son of man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up, that whoever trusts in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever trusts in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who trusts in him is not condemned, but he who does not trust in him is condemned already because he has not trusted in the name. Jesus, I trust in you trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Does that passage have different meaning to you now? Does it resonate with your soul? Because to trust is not just trust, but in trust. It is consent and embrace of the heart. Yes, Jesus, not, I trust in you. 
You are trustworthy. What you say is trustworthy. Not only what you say, you say it by your very name. And you're the one who will never turn from us, turn from me. You're the one who is always faithful, the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you've ever felt betrayed, if you've ever felt let down by people that are even close to you that you love, yes, that's, all, that's part of the human lot, right? And when we can unite that with Jesus in his cross, our risen Lord who is triumphant in his cross, all of that takes on incredible value. And we say from our hearts, Jesus, I trust him what's going on in my life. It doesn't make any sense right now, but I give consent of my heart. And I give intellectual consent because I know who you are. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you are supremely trustworthy. So the message and devotion of divine mercy is here latent and emerges from the gospel of John. And it emerges straight out of the eighth day. It's almost like a continuation of the eighth day. We are called to be apostles of the divine mercy living in and out of the eighth day, brothers and sisters. The eighth day was made for us. We have to come to the light, as Jesus says. And we hear his voice, and we see him as he is, and we rise above our difficulties and the problems in the world and everything that's going on around us when we draw close to the light because the light is the truth. He is the truth. So like we see with the apostles and Peter and and John when they were imprisoned, what happens when we draw close to the light and have faith, have trust in Jesus, and it looks like everything's dismal and world powers are ruling the world and they're conquering, and what's going to happen when this takes place and when this particular party does this and when this other particular party does this from a world sphere and we get caught up in our fear? No. The same thing that happened with Peter and John will happen with us today, brothers and sisters, if we trust in Jesus. Prison prison doors will be opened. Prisoners will be set free and are being set free today in our own time, right now. People are being healed. People are experiencing miraculous healings. So if worst of worst lockdowns come on upon humanity, in the human race, let us do one thing, what? Trust in Jesus. It's the response he's wanted from us from the Garden of Eden to the present time until he comes again definitively in the second time in glory. He wants your trust. He wants my trust. And in the meantime, he's gonna feed us the whole entire way in whatever way that he can because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's gonna feed us with his body, blood, soul, and divinity and his Holy Spirit because his spirit is in you and you are called to do the things that Jesus himself did because he's giving you his own divine nature. So what is our response, brothers and sisters? Trust. Together, brothers and sisters. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Let us stand now and offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father who is rich in compassion and mercy. For Pope Francis and all bishops, May the Holy Spirit be their strength as they shepherd the faithful closer closer to his heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For national and local leaders, may the Lord be their guide in their efforts to promote the sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are experiencing grief or loss, may the consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here and all of you at home and your families on the live stream tuned in with us in this holy mass, may the grace of the Easter season help us faithfully live out our baptismal mission of being priest, prophet, and king. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who have died, especially those who have died alone or have no one else to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us Marian fathers, as well as all those who call or write to us. May the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we also ask for your prayers on this, what could be considered a Marian Mother's Day or need for mother's prayers. We ask for prayers for a special friend, Colleen, of our Marian family, her mother, who is passing at this time. We ask for prayers for Father Jim McCormick, who his mother is passing at this time. We ask for prayers for Kathy Spock, one of our beloved employees whose mother is very sick, for prayers for my mother, and for all of those who are sick and ill. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that this grace of mercy poured out from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us. We trust in you that it be open our hearts and penetrate our souls. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly often pardon, offer pardon, and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your son, our redeemer, with a bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation.
And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the hev heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and look forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they take partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. <clears throat> Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Communion Antiphon, I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, and have appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. an act of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. From the Diary of St. Faustina, paragraph 589. Love casts out fear. Since I came to love God with my whole being and with all the strength of my heart, fear has left me. Even if I were to hear the most terrifying things about God's justice, I would not fear him at all because I have come to know him well. God is love and his spirit is peace. I see now that my deeds which have flowed from love are more perfect than those which I have done out of fear. I have placed my trust in God and fear nothing. I have given myself over to his holy will. Let him do with me as he wishes, and I will still love him.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, God bless all of you. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your week. A couple quick announcements. We invite you to join us um, tonight on EWTN, our Living Divine Mercy show at 6.30 Eastern time. We'll have uh, a new series. We're beginning the, the four last things. So we'll be doing a show on the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. I greatly apologize. Last week, I said to join us at 6.30. The show last week was on at 4.30, so I apologize. Also, we invite you to come live here to join us on Saturday. We've been having a great, great amount of people coming on our Saturday explaining the faith talk. Um, we'll be here live. You can join us by live stream or in person. At 11 a.m., we'll be talking about discernment of God's will. How do we know God's will in our lives? Life. And finally, I'd like to make a comment. We have been absolutely overwhelmed with letters, calls, emails, texts, um, concerned, many of you concerned about this video that is floating out right now on the internet, condemning divine mercy and calling it the greatest deception and how it's leading people to hell. Trust me, we are going to respond. So um, I will be coming out with a response. I'm working with our theologians, um, Dr. Robert Stackpolf, uh, Chris Sparks, and others, other priests. I'll even consult Father Kaz. We will be making a very professional and very merciful response, but it's very important that you know that there's a lot of misunderstanding in this particular video that's going viral in condemnation of St. Faustina, and divine mercy. So please know that we will be um, answering it. We're not going to attack the people who made the video. We're simply going to address the misconceptions in the video. So please know that that's coming. We, we, we've been getting literally hundreds and hundreds of, of, of correspondences about this video. So yes, we will be addressing it. So thank you for bringing it to our attention. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Michael the Archangel, defend us, us in battle. battle. Be, Be our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares, snares of, the, of devil. the devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And do thou, do thou, O Prince of the, of the Heavenly Host, host by, by the power, power of God, God cast, cast into hell, hell Satan, Satan and, all and all the evil, evil spirits, spirits who prowl about, about the world, world seeking, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. And may the souls, souls of the faithful, faithful departed, departed through the mercy, the mercy of God, God rest, rest in, in peace. peace. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Have a great week. Christ, who once for sinners bled, now the firstborn from the dead, groaned in endless might and power, lives and reigns forevermore. Hail, eternal hope our high, hail, our King of victory, hail, our Prince of life adored, help and save us, gracious Lord. Father Chris Alar, the Marian Fathers, and we want to continue to invite you to be a part of God's divine mercy. Remember, Jesus told St. Faustina that divine mercy is mankind's last hope of salvation, and now you can be a part of it. How? Every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time in the United States, or 
3.30 West Coast time, but it's broadcast all over the world, you can tune in to Living Divine Mercy. This is our brand new show on EWTN that gives you teaching about divine mercy and inspiring stories of how to live it in your life. So if you tune in, you can live that mercy in your life and that's what gets you to heaven. So please join us again every Wednesday at 6.30 on EWTN or you can stream it on their website, EWTN.com. And if you miss it all together, that's okay. We have all the old episodes on our website at livingdivinemercy.org. God bless you.